Praise God, somebody. From whom all blessings flow. Somebody should just stand and give God a praise for no reason. Just because he is good. I don't care what kind of week you have, but somebody didn't get up this morning. There are about nine people that I remember that they didn't get up this morning. They were in a prayer meeting somewhere and they didn't make it to the next day. Let's praise God for them, somebody. There's somebody standing under the sound of my voice. That you're still thinking that I can make it till tomorrow. You're still thinking that tomorrow is promised for you. And God has a message for you today. All you have promises right now. There's somebody here today that needs to be baptized. You need to go down in Jesus' yes, name today. today. Somebody Father, hear me. Father. You need to go down in the name of Jesus Christ today. Come on, church, because tomorrow is not promise. There's somebody under the sound of my voice today that you need to come to a deeper revelation of Jesus Christ. It needs to happen today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody agree with me. I only need two or three. In Jesus' name. I, I thank Pastor Mac for this opportunity this morning. I thank the ministers of this church for your support. I thank my wife for her support as well. It was very evident while we were in Jamaica that if I was there by myself, Pastor Mac, I probably would be in trouble. I might have been a little bit over my head, but God equally yoked me. Right. <laughs> Come on. He equally yoked me with somebody that could support me when I needed that support and encourage me when I needed that encouragement. Yes, sir. Right. In Jesus' name, I, I thank God for the elders of the church. Their prayers kept me going. And today I would be lying if I didn't say I wasn't starting to feel the tiredness, Pastor Man. It's starting to hit me, but in Jesus' name, there's a word that's coming forth this morning. And if you can stand with me, God already confirmed this word, and I, I love it because this, was, this wasn't one of those easy words that he just gives you. And when you're sleeping, you wake up and you have that entire message ready. It was one of those words you had to fight for. Amen? And uh, I wanted to preach something different and something relevant to Father's Day. And I had a nice one in mind, and God just changed the entire thing. So I'm just going to go with what he said this morning. And then I'm sitting back there this morning, and I, and I believe it was Sister Zion and her brother came up, and they started saying, God is one, not two, you know, three. Confirm my word. Somebody else, I don't remember who it was, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, thy God is one God. Somebody else, before they sang, they said that. So my word has already been confirmed twice. <laughs> even before I got up to preach. So you don't have to amen me this morning. I'll still be all right. You don't have to yell. You don't have to jump. I'm going to still be all right. Because God has brought this church to a different level. Where it's not about the shout or the jump. That's good. But it's about the word of God. Somebody Woo! say amen. First Timothy 3 and 16. It says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Confirmed word. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, Believe on in the world and receive up into glory. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Come on, preach that word. Jesus' name. Father, right now, and before I open my mouth anymore, I pray, oh God, that you would push me down and Holy Ghost speak right now. Lord, I pray that the man that's before you, oh God, do not let me speak this morning, but take full control in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you. Can the church say in Jesus' name? Jesus. In Jesus' name. Today I'd like to talk about, it's a simple topic, it has seemingly nothing to do with Father's Day. But indeed it does because we need to know who and whose we are if we are to succeed in this journey that we're taking, this Christian journey. Amen? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 
It simply says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And I'm going to take my time this morning as much as I have it. And it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Now, if you allow me to lay a bit, little bit of foundation, the Jews back in those days, the Jews were known as the people of the one God. They were the one God people. Amen? Yes, Somebody said one God. one God. And I was reading in Matthew Henry's commentary, it said the Jews were taught that Jehovah our God is one Jehovah. That he is the only living and true God. He only is God, and he is but one. Somebody say one. 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 The firm belief of this self-evident truth would effectually arm them against all idolatry. Right. You, you gotta understand, when people nowadays we're trying to make it seem as though it's not important to understand that there is simply one God. I'm here to tell you it's a distinction that we should wear with pride. That's it. When you start talking about one God, you start talking about the power of that one God. Somebody say amen. When you start to divide that one God, then you start to dilute the power and dilute the strength of that one God. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. I'm here to talk to you about the mystery of godliness. Somebody say amen. The mystery of godliness. Hallelujah. Somebody asked Jesus Christ when he was walking this earth and he was starting his ministry. He said, Rabbi, which is the greatest commandment under the law? And they were not asking to know, but they were asking to trick him to get him confounded and tied up between the law of Moses and the New Testament that he was bringing in. And Jesus simply said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. He said, This is the first great commandment. And he said, The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said further, on these two commandments lies all the law and the prophets. So he's saying, I'm basing my ministry, my word, everything that comes out of me is going to be based on the fact that you need to love God and need you to love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going somewhere. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I might not know where he's going, but he's going somewhere this morning. He's going somewhere. I'm building a sure foundation. Jesus' name. So we are commanded to love God. But to love someone, you got to know that someone. Amen? Amen? I can't say I love my wife unless I know my wife. And the Bible has a different kind of know. And when he said Adam knew Eve, it's an intimate relationship with Eve. How can you love a God that you can't see? And hate a brother that you can see. How? So to love God, which is the greatest commandment, you must first know him. Somebody say you gotta know him. You got to know him. So when they start to try to interject man's thoughts and man's ways into the oneness of God, when they try to jump like us, when they try to sing like us and worship like us, and some of them even speak in tongues like they speak in tongues like us, but you deny the power thereof, then I submit you don't know God. You don't know him. And what does he say on that day of judgment? He's gonna, some people are gonna come to him and they're gonna say, I cast out devils in your name. I heal the sick in your name. I touch the eyes of the blind in you, and he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Amen? Amen? So this morning, what I try to do in the time that I have is simply allow you to know a little better understanding, a greater revelation of who God is. Amen? Yes. We're commanded to love him. We should know him. Looking at some of the traits of God's divine nature, it says that God is omnipresent. Yes. Let me teach you a little bit. 
all-encompassing and he is everywhere. God is omniscient, meaning he is all-knowing. You can't hide anything from him. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. Yes. And I want to know, can somebody explain to me, how can an all-powerful God be divided into three units? Somebody explain that to me. If you have a hundred percent of the power in the whole universe, how can you now be divided into three? I, 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 somebody explain that to me. Because if he is three, then maybe one has a third of the power. That makes logical sense. Maybe the second one has another third, and the other one has another third. But God said, all power, give it unto him. It's by my name, my will, my word, and my power. Amen? Amen? So that's not divided. Matthew Henry also says it's better to have one fountain than a thousand cisterns, one all-sufficient God than a thousand insufficient ones. Right. If your God is simply a third of a triune Godhead, I'm here to tell you he's insufficient. Right. Because he's not all-powerful. He comes up short. I don't need a God with a third of the power. When I'm in my pit, I need a God with all power. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I really had to look, and I'm not going to apologize for the word of God. I will not do that for a long, as long as he allows me to preach. I won't do that. But what I will say this morning is that when I was going into this, I had a lot of friends who are Trinitarian. And I'm not here to attack you this morning. Because God says I gotta love him and I gotta love my neighbor as myself. So this is not to attack you, but what I'm here to tell you this morning is that yes, you love God. Yes, I believe you're genuine. Yes, you're dedicated. Yes, you've done some things in his name. But I'm here this morning to give you a more perfect revelation of who God is. And I looked, and sometimes you have to look. You got to go read the Quran to find out what you're arguing against, Brother Ricky. You got to go read some Trinitarian doctrine to see what it is that they're saying. Don't just disagree with it without knowing what you're disagreeing with. So I went to a Trinitarian website, a well-known one, an official one. I was like, what really is the doctrine of Trinity? And it simply says Trinitarian is a theology it's the Christian theology that God is a trinity. The trinity is a teaching that there is only one God. That's surprising. I didn't realize that. They teach that it's only one God. However, one God in all existence and God exists in three, he exists in three distinct, simultaneous, listen to this, co-eternal and co-powerful persons. One known as the Father, one known as the Son, and the other known as the Holy Spirit. And that was interesting to me. So they do believe he's one, split into three distinct persons. Somebody hear me this morning. God simply said, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. That was the commandment straight from the word of God. The word of God says in John 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So there was God, and there was the word. They both were the same. And God said this in his word, that I'm one. Very simple. Man had to complicate. 325 AD, let me teach you a little bit. At the Council of Nicaea, Emperor Constantine, who was recently converted, said to himself, there's too much isms and schisms in the church. And what I'm going to do to get everybody together, I'm going to hold this conference of all the bishops. Some said over 300, some said it was 2,000. But all the representative bishops from all the different countries will come together. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to stay there and hash it out until we agree on a doctrine that everybody's going to follow in Christianity. One of the worst ways to get something done is to get it done out of a compromise. I don't want to hear a compromise position to make people happy. I want to hear what thus said the word of God. 
natural. Here's a politician trying to get peace in his kingdom, and the solution to that is to compromise every single thing that the church stands for. The solution is to compromise the one thing that God made clearly. Here in Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. And then complicate it into this doctrine that no one can understand. How can we be one and three at the same time? How can you shear, this is what they say, they shear, each, each person in the Godhead shears the same substance, but they are co-equal and co-powerful. Does anyone know anything in this known world that is omni or omnipotent? Do you know anything else other than God that is 100% power over everything? I'm not, I know I'm not yelling, I'm just asking. Do you know anything else? There is one source of power in this entire universe and it's not divided. I'm here to tell somebody, it's not divided. There is one source, and it's Jesus Christ. So at the Council of Nicaea, they walked away, and two bishops disagreed. Two bishops, out of 300 to 2002, stood and disagreed. The Word of God said, when you've done all that you can, just stand. So we're in a day and a time, Sister Matthew said, where men are now the laughing stock. God said we should be the head and not the tail. And we're supposed to get accustomed to the fact that we have no power over our family, no power over our situation, no power over our prisons, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. God has already told you who you are, and he never took away that word that he gave you. Amen? Amen. Two bishops disagreed. They stood up and he said no. Two brethren. Sometimes we got to stand on that unpopular position. Right. Right. How many of you would stand? How many? I, don't, I don't want to reference that prayer meeting again. Because it really hurt me when I heard that. That, that situation in Charleston it hurt me. I, 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 want, I didn't even want to watch it. You have people in the presence of God praying, Bible study. Somebody comes in and shoots them off. It hurt me as a Christian. It hurt me as a believer. It just hurt me as a man. But there was a story told one time this was in World War II. Two stormtroopers came into a church and they said, everybody who stands for the word of God, if you profess his name right now and you say you stand for Jesus Christ, we're going to kill you dead. More than 80, 90% of the church ran out of that building. Then the two of them looked at the people who were left and they said, good. We want to come and pray with you and worship the God that you're worshiping, but we needed to know who was serious. Because if you're not serious this morning, the devil is going to sift you as we. So I'm not here to make you jump. I'm not here to make you shout. I got a different ministry. I'm here to give you the word and what you do with that word if you're serious enough. It's up to you. Are you serious this morning or are you just playing church? And what if he took the gun and he said, I'm going to kill you if you 
stand for Jesus Christ, if you dismiss him right now, you can walk out. What would we do? I know you jump. I know you shout. I know you speak in tongues. But would you stand like those two bishops did in that difficult time? Would you stand for righteousness? Would you stand for holiness? Would you still say that God can provide a way out? Facing a government, would you stand? How serious are you this morning about what we represent? I want to be known as a one God apostolic. I don't need any other titles. None of those are going to get me into heaven. I just need to be known that it, I'm covered by the banner of Jesus Christ. I looked at another popular church website. This one is a black denomination. It's also Trinitarian. And I looked at their belief and it said that God is one, that there is one God, that the Father is a distinct divine person, distinct from the Son, distinct from the Holy Spirit, and that Jesus Christ was truly God, and yet was a person distinct from the Father and distinct from the Holy Spirit. Now I'm trying to figure out, do they understand the word distinct and what that means? Distinct means, by definition, not being the same, not identical, and actually separate. How can you be separate and the same? And if that wasn't enough, I kept reading my dictionary. Some of us, we need to break, put, put down the MP3 player, put down the iPod, start reading your dictionary sometime. Bible dictionary. If that wasn't enough, then it says definition number two. It means this thing means different in nature. Different in nature. They're saying they're co-equal, co-powerful, and made from the same substance. A dictionary is saying this thing means different in nature and in quality. How can you be the same and distinct? I'm just using the word of God and a dictionary. And it disproves the idea of Trinity. My Trinitarian friends, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm simply here to point you to the word of God. Point you to some logical word that simply says what it is and God put his word above his name. It stands alone. He doesn't need any confirmation like I do. When God says it, that's it. It's settled. I looked a little further into this Trinitarian thing. I'm not making fun of it at all. So many people are very dedicated and serious people. I'm not making fun of it. They're my brothers and my sisters. I love them. I have friends that are, and I show them I love them. They come to my house. I break bread with them. And that's what we're called to do. How else can you influence someone if you don't first love them? Jesus Christ said to Peter, Peter, you love me. Feed my sheep. He said to Peter, Peter, you love me. He said, feed my lambs. Peter, you love me. That's how we show him. 
that we love him, we get to know him, know his nature, then we feed his sheep. How serious are you this morning? What sheep are you feeding? I went a little further into the Trinitarian doctrine. And I realized it was on a Catholic official website. And it simply said, this is what we believe. And I looked at it, and it didn't call it a doctrine. What it did was it called it a dogma. When you go home, look up the word dogma and see what that means. It's not the word. Matter of fact, in that same paragraph towards the end, it says nowhere in scripture. And I like the fact that they were optimistic. <laughs> they said nowhere in scripture as yet. Like they're expecting some new scripture to be written. Nowhere in scripture as yet has the word and term Trinity ever appeared Never. in any known scripture. Never. Never. My question to them, if it's never appeared in scripture, why? We're so excited and we 
I'm sure what he was trying to do came from a good place. He was trying to do something for God. He was converted. And some, but sometimes we, as new converts, we get lost and we go off the path a little bit. Constantine, you were off the path. Some can't be same and different at the same time. And then you can't build doctrine upon an opinion. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, compromise is needed in our regular life, but it's not needed in the Word of God. God says it, I believe it. A lot of these universal churches, what got them there? Compromise. They compromise their standards to the point where they're outside of Scripture. You know, there's one pastor I see on the TV. I'm like, how does he even get time to preach the word because he's so busy smiling? 800,000 people in a crowd are all going to hell because of a man's opinion. You're taking that opinion and you're building doctrine. A lot of us, we get to the point where as pastors and as teachers, we don't talk about the blood. We don't talk about salvation. We just try to make people feel good. When I was in Jamaica, I came up to the podium one night. And I told them right off the bat, I'm about to step on your toes this morning. Right off the bat. And I believe that men and women of God, we ought not to be ashamed to do that. Amen? Amen. Speak that word. It says in season and out of season. Amen. I just didn't understand how they could say God was the same substance when Revelation 1 and 8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, said the Lord. Which is, which was, and which is to come. Simply meaning there is no one else but me. Acts 4 verse 11. It says, this is the stone which was set at naught of the builders. Which has now become the head of the corner. It simply says, neither is there salvation in any of For there is none other name under heaven. Given among men, whereby we must be saved. Somebody tell somebody, you got to look for the name. I don't care what my titles are. What's my name? You got to know God. If you see me running down the street and you're in a pit and you need some help,
without controversy. Woo. Hey, my hey. God. Yes. Jesus. Great is the mystery of godliness. And we stay on that question, but we don't understand. He says before he explained it, there is no controversy. Glory. Constantine found one, but to God it was already settled. Yes, sir, indeed. Great. And to clear up somebody's messed up doctrine. The different, what they call persons, they're not persons, but they're manifestations. Yep. I want to help you this morning. And with our controversy, great is the mystery of God. And as God was manifest in flesh, Jesus, justified in the spirit, Holy Ghost, seen of angels, God, preached unto the Gentiles the word, believed on in the world, faith, and was shaped up into glory again. Come on, somebody. They're not perfect. They're certainly not distinct. But they are many out of the same substance. I agree with that one because they are one. One in number. One in power. One in name. There is none other name. That's the word of God. That's not my opinion or dogma. So like I said in another message, I'm going to end with this. They are not distinct persons, but they are manifestations. I heard somebody today ask, can't remember which sister it was, Sister Danny, said, what do you need from God? Sister Danny, that's a third confirmation of my word, because it's right here in my notes. What those people are calling distinct persons are simply manifestations of God for every need you could possibly have. Amen. You don't believe me? Jehovah had many different names. Every name corresponded to a need. <laughs> you need a banner? Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Raha, you need a shepherd. Lord, my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, you need a healer. There's a lot of church folk right now in need of Jehovah Rapha. So, they're not distinct personalities or persons. This just God manifesting a portion of himself. Manifest means to uncover. So it's simply a part of himself that is revealing to you that you did not know yet because you were not yet in need of it. But now you need a provider. But now you need a shield.
did. And I'm going to leave this last thing with you today, and I'm done. And it simply says, and God showed this to me, and sometimes he shows you some stuff that blows your mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm, here's the trinity they're talking about. God the Father, he was just God when nothing else was. <laughs> God. That's it. That's his personality. He was God when nothing else existed. That was God the Father. I look to my left, I look to my right to swear by something higher because men typically swear by greater. But he said, when I look to my left and my right, I could see none greater. So to sign my covenant with Abraham, I have to swear by myself. That's right. Jehovah, God the Father. That's no. number two, God the Son, you know who he was. I just said, Jesus was God. When we needed a sacrifice to die, that was without blemish and without spot, no wrinkle. Jehovah Jesus was the lamb that died. It's just another part of who he is. And lastly, God the Holy Spirit, you want to know who he is? When God was raptured, his physical body, the one where he could still show Peter and them, the whole, it was physical, the whole in his hands, when he was raptured. And he said, simply, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will come and he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. They weren't distinct persons. It was just God fulfilling a need. And for that, he took on a different name. And he revealed a different characteristic of himself that was already there. No distinct persons. It can't be the same and different. These are very simple things. Man messed it up, but they're very simple things. I'm not going to beg anyone. I want to greet all the fathers in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, if you're questioning whether or not your salvation is complete, and if you're questioning whether or not you really know him, right? I want you to come to this altar in Jesus' name. The men and the women of God of this church will pray for you. But I want you to come to the altar. You're not going to ask more than once. God knows what you need. But he needs something from you. And what he needs, he needs for you to recognize that you don't know him yet. Do you want to know him this morning? That's the last call. Not begging anyone. Those of you this morning.